Yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe she can. Oh my god. <laughs> well, you've ruined it. <laughs> you trying to scare me? I was going to come behind you and give me a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> the final movies in Harry Potter may have been more on the intense side as far as filming goes, but that doesn't mean it isn't without its bloopers and ridiculous antics behind the scenes. <sighs> <laughs> Number one, Emma Watson stole some hair from Harry Potter himself? Iconic. Ow! My day, my day. Don't they give you wigs for this kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Either way, we admire Emma for her tenacity. Number two, you've got some nerve to call Harry Potter hideous. Bill, look away. I'm hideous. Bro's not coming off. I look fantastic in women's clothes. It isn't as easy as the movies make it look, eh, Dan? Number three, Rupert Grint took a trip to nowhere nice. He stumbled over a log, and Hermione tried to comfort him over his embarrassment, because apparently he tripped with style. <laughs> the most amazing, like, <laughs> James Bond style. Well, Rupert's having none of it. Hit it at quite a pace and then just sort of over it. If he needs a good excuse, he can just say his character would trip over the log. Perfect casting, confirmed. Number four, there are worse ticks than corpsing on camera. Emma Watson's always been a giggler, but the stress of staying in the moment and pretending a creepy snake is about to pop out at her set her over the edge. We should give her some credit. First off, pretending you're about to be lunged at by a giant scary snake is tough. Adding on the layer of the crew attempting to jump scare her by yelling snake is just plain unfair. Snake! Ah! Snake! Fringo! Number five, the whole place is falling apart. Is this why they didn't use this shot? <laughs> Oops, quick, blame it on Rupert. What we can't get over is how Dan went in intending to break the thing. That's not the face of an innocent man. Was the set designed to break? If not, he knows it's a set, right? The things aren't always sturdy. Keep your hands to yourself. Number six, it's gotta sting when a beautiful woman is giggling at the idea of kissing you. We don't care if you're just good friends. Seriously, is it just us, or is Rupert looking a bit offended by just how giggly Emma is about their kiss? <laughs> <laughs> what did Rupert have to apologize for? We need to know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And how about that big celebration after they landed the shot? <laughs> At least Daniel wasn't in the room making the situation worse. Uh, you are not uh, allowed to be <laughs> Everyone was there for my kiss. Yeah, Emma. Wait, what guy wants to be around watching his friends awkwardly smooch over and over again? Take a day, treat yourself. Number seven, Rupert's like a bull in a china shop. Rupert may play a keeper in Quidditch, but in this case, he's a quaffle. I said to her, are you okay? Rupert says, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Sounds like Rupert was the Weasley on and off screen. Number eight. As much fun as Helena Bonham Carter seems, we'd rather act alongside literally anybody else. No offense, Helena, if you're watching this, we would just prefer our internal organs stay on the inside. She is notorious for injuring her co-stars. Okay, she did it like twice from what we could gather. Not only did she once perforate Matthew Lewis's eardrum with a wand, she also whacked Danny with a dagger. <laughs> Number nine. This may not be the cause of a magic wand, but Emma Watson still had a dizzy spell. You can, and you probably should, if you want to get through the rest of the day. Number 10. In character or out of character, the Weasleys like to have a bit of fun. That's mommy. She's had a bit too much hair. Truly, these two were the life of the simulated party. Oh, <laughs> 
number 11, rule 101. Don't slurp your tea around Emma Watson or no work will get accomplished. Come on, tea isn't even that funny. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Turns out, Emma is just a snooty tea drinker who sips silently on her tea and judges everyone else. You're no good at hiding, really. Awful. <laughs> I now know how you feel. Number 12. When Helena Bonham Carter goes off script, magic happens. But sometimes that magic is a bit too much. <laughs> she doesn't need any more incentive for chaos. Don't be afraid to go off script. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Number 13. Michael Gambon just showed up here and talked a lot in, like, different ways. Michael isn't doing a whole lot to get into character for Dumbledore. He's already Dumbledore, but he just amps up the mysterious factor on camera. No, the beard doesn't do it all for him. When we do the scene now again in a minute, I should change my... <laughs> it will be played in a completely different way. Gasp! That almost sounds like acting. Claim in a more ethereal way. <laughs> Number 14. For reasons we aren't quite sure of, Helena Bonham Carter adopted Daniel Radcliffe. Come on, get boy, get on, get on. This behavior on set seems a little Lestrange. Here, 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 here is my dog. Dana, just, just for a <laughs> Number 15. Don't bring jokes to a wand fight. Oh, come on, Granny. Sounds like Helena Bonham Carter was able to make the Weasley mama wheeze. Back off, boys. We bet it takes work to get under Molly's skin, but Bellatrix makes it look so easy. Helena's character is akin to the class clown, and we've seen how Molly responds to Fred and George acting like clowns. Number 16. Poor Dan got stuck repeating a line over and over again. It's almost like he's filming a movie. That line, or variant of that line, is all I say for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> Apparently, you're bad at killing snakes. Kill the snake! We've got to kill the snake! We have to kill the snake! We get the idea. And are you uh, going to get it right at some point so we can all go to lunch? Burn, Radcliffe. Imagine being that guy. Number 17. This was an I meant to do that moment, for sure. Alan Rickman had very, very few bloopers in all of the Harry Potter franchise. The man was a legend, perfect on screen and off, except for this one moment. Ow. The delayed ow is what makes this moment just hilarious. Number 18, defeating Voldemort is no laughing matter. His lack of a nose, on the other hand, is. <laughs> Giggles is back again. Did we mention Emma was given the nickname Giggles? <laughs> Although, we're pretty sure she was already messing up before the giggles erupted. You can see it in the way she just accepted her defeat. We'll go once again. Number 19. There are literally TV shows dedicated to racing. Dan and Emma must have gotten in the wrong line at the casting calls. Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson were definitely the more competitive of the trio of actors. They're all gonna say to the fastest. I am. Anytime they got a chance to run on screen, the two made a challenge of it. Emma said, Emma probably didn't. <laughs> She's wrong, I'm faster than Emma. The competition was getting so out of hand, they got a wee little reprimand from the director and Emma was told she needed to slow down to get the shot right. This scene is about the film, not about which one of you can run the fastest. And literally everybody knows Rupert isn't the fastest. Even he does. Rupert knows he's not the fastest. Number 20. Tom Felton was not prepared for his instincts to betray him so much. The worst part about doing a hard stunt wrong is doing it again. Three, two, one, drop. <laughs> Tom Felton can't not anticipate the drop from the table. The look in their faces, that is genuine. <laughs> Honestly, it's one thing to do a stunt from a rig that looks like it was built for the scene. It's another to rely on a very real looking pile of junk to drop you to the floor. We gotta say, we're on Tom's side. It looks absolutely terrifying. Now that it's been over 10 years, looking back on these silly moments has us longing to rewatch the series. And while they were doing their best to stay serious on set, they found the best way to entertain themselves on their breaks. 
The second ever, but first outdoors, Danger Ball 2009 <laughs> Championships. <laughs> What's the goofiest thing you've ever done at your job? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for hanging out with us here at The Things.